Hey y'all, this is Zach with Real Property Associates here and I'm with Dan Keller from a new, new American Funding. He's the lender that I refer all my clients to and he does a great job taking care of them. So what I, what I wanted to do here today is um, interview him about the lending process so that um, he can bring some value to you guys as you're watching. Um, Dan, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I first, really appreciate first it. Off, yeah. <laughs> first off, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Um, you're doing a great job in the Seattle marketplace and, and even, well, I didn't even know that you were from Uncle Tio. Up north too, so born and raised. Um, yeah, so no, you're doing a great job. So it's an honor. Cool. Well, maybe start off by telling everybody a little bit about yeah. Dan Keller and then the team here at New American Funding. Yeah. So uh, my name is Dan Keller. I'm a mortgage loan originator. I've been in the mortgage industry since 2008. I know that's a crazy. Every time I say that, people are like, "Oh my gosh, what a crazy time to to jump into the mortgage industry." Yeah. Um, I left a very su successful career in uh, collegiate and professional strength and conditioning, and I knew one thing. Um, if I was going to make a career change, and I made a career change to be home with my family more and to uh, to be involved with something um, long term, but if I knew if I was going to make that change, I was going to have to go in and be all in, and I did that. I had jumped in the mortgage industry in the toughest time, many will say, in the history of the United States yeah, in regards definitely. to the financial markets and the housing markets, and made it work. And I started out with my, my background is being a, a college professor, and uh, I started out with the idea that if I could educate, if I could bring education and transparency to an industry that was really struggling with those two things, uh, that I might be able to step uh, stand out. And my focus was obviously getting into a new industry. My focus was just first-time home buyers, and a big part of working with first-time home buyers was education. Obviously, fast forward eight years. Um, and now, you know, I've built my business. I've got a great team, mm -hmm. a big team. And the whole purpose of having a big team, which you know, is so that we can cater to our clients. I'm still the main guy up front. Uh, I'm the doctor. And I, I give these analogies all the time. Okay. I use, I'm probably the king of crazy analogies. And, and you as a home buyer, when you get to sit down and talk with me, you're going to see this. But I think uh, from an educator's approach, it's the best way to kind of understand things mm -hmm. sometimes is through maybe cheesy analogies <laughs> yeah, definitely. and so I'm the doctor and so what's gonna happen is you're gonna come in and I've I've kind of built my practice with uh, under this notion that prescription before diagnosis is malpractice mm -hmm. think about that prescription before diagnosis is malpractice in the medical world right mm -hmm. and so there are pretty much two things. Like, let's assume that you don't necessarily have a family. Let's assume that we're just talking about you, Mr. Homebuyer, not the Mrs. Homebuyer or the family, but just you. There's two things in life that we spend a lot of time focusing on, two main important things, right? One is our health and two is our finances. So if finances is almost right up there with your health or sometimes more important, because if your finances are off, your health's going to struggle, right? Yeah. So. Why, if those are the two most important things, do we commoditize finances? Mm -hmm. Do we commoditize the housing, housing decisions and mortgage decisions? And so that's kind of my approach is I've used, I've built a team around kind of like a doctor nurse. Mm -hmm. Like my team is there to help gather the information and put it all together for me to review. Then my team will reach out to you, schedule the appointment. And at that point in time, we are going to diagnose and we're going to prescribe. And the diagnosis is, um, here are your options. It's not just one size fits all. I mean, if you think you can go to the internet and use an app to get a mortgage, it can be done, but it's crazy to think like that. Yep. And so I kind of slowed things down. Listen, this is the largest financial decision of your life. You get this yep. in working with your clients. Your clients get this in working with me. And what we try to do is just slow things down, yep. educate. We want smart home buyers and walk you through the process step by step so that when you get with Zach, when you go out into the marketplace and you place an offer on a home, you know exactly what that home's gonna cost you mm -hmm. from a monthly standpoint, from a down payment standpoint, and then you've got a strategy around kind of long-term. That home and that mortgage is now tied into your short-term and your long-term financial goals. So that's kind of a long <laughs> intro <laughs> philosophy, but that's, you know, yeah. I, I don't want to just say I'm a mortgage guy because no, I'm not, I, I'm not, I, there's, I pour my heart and soul into this. Definitely. Thank you. I, I see that. Yeah. And my clients say that. Yeah. So, yeah. so maybe tell those that haven't got a loan before, okay. 
what are the main factors that influence loan approval and how does that process? Yeah, so process great work? question. Probably the best question that you could ask as a real estate agent or that you could ask as a home buyer. So there's four factors that go into your loan approval, period. There, there are no others, no matter what bank or what lender says. So there's four factors. The first one is credit. Okay, that's the first, that's the barrier of entry. So what we do with every single one of our clients is we're gonna evaluate credit up front. I don't even care if you have a 760 credit score, an A plus credit score, I'm still gonna evaluate it. I wanna look at that. I wanna make sure that there are some things, that advice that I can give you so that you can maintain that credit score from an identity theft stamp, protection standpoint. Or, you know, I see this all the time with first time home buyers, they have great credit, but it's almost by luck. They don't have a lot of credit, so they've been okay. So there are some things there, some advice, some advice that I'll give you there. On the flip side of it, if you've missed the mark on in regards to credit, mm -hmm. listen, I've read thousands of credit reports. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of things that I, I pretty much, I don't wanna say I've seen it all, but I've seen a lot. And yeah. so there's a lot, of, a lot of advice that I can give clients that might have missed the mark where I can help them maybe improve their credit score so that they get a better interest rate. So credit's the first thing we look at. The second is cash. Okay. So cash, cash is in regards to paying for your down payment or your closing costs. There are programs out there where uh, the state of Washington has some down payment assistance programs. If you qualify, if you make less than approximately $94,000 a year mm -hmm. household income, you can qualify for some assistance. But for the most part, um, cash refers to your down payment plus your closing costs. Okay. It's a big part of our meeting because then we talk about strategy around that, whether we ask the seller to pay for some of the closing costs or all the closing costs. or. Um, you know, a big myth out there right now, Zach, is that you have to have 20% down to purchase a home. Yeah, definitely. And you don't. Mm -hmm. And another myth is you have to have 20% down to avoid paying private mortgage insurance. And there are ways around that. So, um, so you've got credit, you've got cash. The third factor is income. So that's where by looking at that up front and uh, evaluating your employment and your income, um, and that's a key role because here's the thing, where a lot of the big banks and credit unions go wrong, they have you fill out an online form and whatever you type in as a home buyer, I make $8,500 a month, mm -hmm. boom, okay, we pull your credit, boom, okay, you're pre-approved for $600,000. But what they don't realize is out of that $8,500 a month income, 2,500 of it is commissions. And you've only been uh, receiving commissions for a year and a half, you can't use that income. Therefore, once you go into underwriting, the underwriter says, no, you don't make 8,500, you actually make 6,500, and now you don't qualify for that particular home, that you showed them and that you wrote the offer on. So we do all of that up front. So credit, cash, income, and the last factor is property. So we spend some time talking about property, property, condo, townhome, single family home, uh, is the home located in a flood zone? So there's a lot of things that you need to know as a home buyer that, that is relative to the property that you choose. So those are the four factors. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. So you mentioned, uh, you mentioned kind of the process to get approved. What does that process look like on the back end? Once people are approved, yeah. take us through that. So one of the things that, that I learned early on in my career, and I learned the hard way, unfortunately, is I tried to do it all myself. And at the end of the day, I'm a mortgage advisor. And what I do best is educating and keeping my clients informed. All right. I'm not an underwriter. No. I'm not an underwriter, I never have been. I don't have a background in underwriting. Um, and so what I've done is I've built a team that is strong. So Bree Seidner, for example, you know Bree, 15 yeah. year veteran loan processor. So if you don't understand the mortgage industry, loan processors typically pre-underwrite the file and they work hand in hand with the underwriters. Yeah. So they are essentially, Bree could be a phenomenal underwriter if she wanted to. Um, and so what we do is we pre-underwrite every single one of our files. Zach, there, there's a reason why Every single one of the files that I fund for you and your clients, they don't have issues. We, you, you're not getting a phone call from me going, ugh, uh, we're gonna need a 30 day extension or unfortunately this file's declined. It doesn't happen. You deal with it up front. Yeah, we deal with it up front. Um, I haven't had a file declined in over four years. And so once it gets past Bree, it closes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So then uh, after somebody gets their house, they, they find the house they like, we make an offer, it gets accepted, what does that look like? What does the back end look like? Yeah, so the back end, so again, we do a lot of that up front. So what I do in my office is I've built my business on education, okay, communication, and execution. Okay, another. Those aren't analogies, but again, I just I, that's those are the three pillars. So education, a lot of the education is done up front. Mm -hmm. If you go to my website, 
um, which is the dankellergroup.com, and you click apply with Dan, that link will take you, that button will take you to my mortgage concierge page where there's an intro video and then the two steps for getting approved and then below that, there's a series of four videos and it's a video series that I created and it's called What to Expect Next. And what I've found by, by creating that video series is you, the home buyer, you're always in the know. Yeah. So we're gonna educate you up front, but when you come in, you meet with me and we have that mortgage planning meeting, I can't expect you to retain everything. Yeah. That's a lot of information. This is the first time or maybe the second time you purchase the home. You don't do this every single day. We fund 20 to 25 transactions a month. We yeah. do this every single day. And I'm not saying this to brag, but that type of volume puts me in the top one to 3% in the whole entire nation. So I say that to let you know that we're, an ex we're experts. Yeah. We're experts at what we do. And so the education's done up front. Mm -hmm. Once that offer is accepted, we update you. I personally call my real estate agents yep. and clients on Tuesdays, or Jason does, and then Bree or Jason will send out a, a detailed Friday status update to all my clients, to mm -hmm. everyone involved in the transaction. So there's the communication aspect of it. And because we communicate so well, and because everyone's on the same page, we're able to execute quickly. Mm -hmm. So after the offer is accepted, there's a home inspection. Mm -hmm. After the home inspection comes back and there's no negotiations that need to take place, the appraisal is ordered. We take care of that. Um, after the appraisal comes back, appraise, that's a sore subject right now because yep. appraisals are taking a little bit longer than normal. Mm -hmm. uh, but after the appraisal comes back um, and assuming that it's at value and there's no work orders needed, we go back into underwriting. Mm -hmm. The underwriter signs off on the appraisal and a clear to close is issued. During that time, that's typically a one to two week time period, we've locked your interest rate. We've sent out your disclosures, and it's just a matter of just keeping you in the know. Yeah. Okay. Once the clear to close is issued, the final closing disclosures are issued. You've got to wait three days. During that time period, we're going to call you, and we're going to do a pre-funding review. That's where we go over your down payment, your monthly payment, and um, how to wire that money to escrow. So we take care of all that. Awesome. And um, after that, we fund your loan. You sign at escrow. We fund your loan, and you give them keys. Yeah. That's the best part, giving them the keys. Yeah, <laughs> celebration time. Yeah, so we've talked about a little bit about the process mm -hmm. and you know getting your pre-approval, what it looks like, yep. going through the process. A lot of people want to know how do you get how do you get the best interest rate? Yeah, so we talk about that. So at the at my mortgage planning meeting, um, and you'll get this packet when you sit down and you talk with me. Um, there's really five factors that go into getting the best interest rate, and I explain this to all of my clients. The media and the internet will tell you that you need to, sh and so will the consumer CFPB, that you need to shop for a mortgage. You know, looking around, the best advice I can give you in regards to shopping for a mortgage is a referral, a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Talk to your real estate agent. Talk to your financial planner. Maybe some friends that had great experiences. Um, but as far as like shopping for the best rate, you know, the... If, if you have been living under a rock, you don't, it doesn't take a whole lot to realize that rates are really low right now. Mm -hmm. They've been really low. Yeah. The margin for profit on mortgage rates is almost gone. Yeah. So if, for example, I'm going to throw out a name, Wells Fargo is saying that their rates are 3.5%. Well, pretty much every other mortgage company in the country is going to be right around 325 to 3.5%. The maximum margin and difference you'll see is a quarter of a point. Typically, if you see somebody that's lower, much lower than, than the norm, than the average, there's some, that should throw off some kind of some warning signs. Mm -hmm. um, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Maybe it's an online lender that there's a guy or a gal working out of their garage or their basement in Florida, and you're going to use an online lender to try to get a mortgage. Yeah. Not advise. I, one of the things that I tell all my clients, whether you use me or not, use a local mortgage company. Yeah. There's control with that. You can sit down, you can meet them, you can get some advice. But um, how you truly get the best interest rate, one, it's credit score driven. So yep. you have to understand that rates are credit score driven. Two, it's down payment driven. Mm -hmm. So um, in excess of 20% down with a 760 credit, that's how you ace two of those factors. The third factor is you've gotta be willing to pay discount points. Hmm. Um, we at New American Funding, when we disclose our interest rates, we do not disclose any discount points with our rates. I leave that up to our, our clients to, to choose that. I think our rates are really low. Um, so many a times my clients choose not to pay any extra fees to lower their rate. Um, but if you want a lower rate, you gotta be willing to pay about one to one and a half, maybe more in discount points. And we can go over those. That's what we go over in our meeting and we'll yeah. show you those options. 
The third thing is, if you're purchasing a condo, interest rates are going to be higher mm -hmm. with a condo purchase versus a single family home. So the fourth factor is purchasing a single family home over a condo. And then the fifth factor is the market. Um, I don't encourage anybody to try to time the market, but yeah. when you're working with a professional like me that understands the market, understands the week ahead mm -hmm. or a couple of weeks ahead and what could cause the market to move up or down, yeah. that's important. That type of advice is, is, is critical to helping you get the best rate. Awesome, Dan. So you mentioned the market and mm -hmm. understanding interest rates. How do interest rates fluctuate? What is what's the barometer? How are those determined? Just for an education yeah. for everybody. Uh, else? Layman's layman's uh, answer to that question is: <laughs> the, the, typically, you've got money. So on Wall Street, you've got money in stocks. Mm -hmm. Investors put their money in stocks. They put their money in bonds. Mm -hmm. Well, mortgage rates are attached typically to the bond market, okay. right? So if the stock market's up, that means investors have pulled money out of bonds into stocks. Mm -hmm. Well, if you read in the news or hear in the news that the stock market's crashing or it's tanking, that means investors now have pulled money out of stocks and put them into bonds, which is then helping interest rates. Mm -hmm. I believe that interest rates are economic driven. Mm -hmm. So if you're hearing negative economic news, the reason why rates are so low right now is because our economy in the U.S. and the global economy mm -hmm. stinks. Our GDP, gross domestic product report, is the number one indicator in America of how sound, how solid our, our uh, economy is right now. And it's like some, some are saying that, I mean, the reality of it is it's like right around two. Yeah. To be afloat, to be in survival mode, you need it to be right around four and a half to five. So we're not even there yet. No. So we've got a struggling economy. Nationally, it's struggling. And so that's causing rates to stay down. Plus, we've been purchasing mortgage-backed securities for years now, mm -hmm. which is artificially purchasing mortgage bonds, mm -hmm. which has caused rates to stay down. So negative economic news or positive economic news will cause rates to move up or down. Okay. So another another thing on the interest rate topic I've been hearing, and I'm sure a lot of people have been hearing, the Fed's going to raise the yeah. rates, the rates are going to be increased. Yep. How does that affect How does that affect mortgage yeah. interest rates? And, and when, when do you think that's going to be taking yeah. effect? What are some dates maybe yeah. people should be paying attention Great to? Great question. So anytime the Fed meets to discuss a Fed rate hike, Everyone, even mortgage lenders post on social media mm -hmm. and they send out these email blasts that rates are going up, rates are going to be moving. <clears throat> Listen, the Fed funds rate is not directly tied to mortgage-backed securities. It's not directly tied to mortgages. So the Fed funds rate um, regulates the cost of HELOCs, home equity lines of credit, mm -hmm. credit card interest rates, automobile interest rates. It regulates the, the flow of money in and out of banks. So for example, maybe the return that you're getting on your savings account will be impacted by the Fed decision. But as far as mortgage rates, there's no direct, there, there's okay. no direct tie, yep. but there is a correlation. So the next Fed meeting um, is on December 14th. So we are, what is today? October 14th, 2016. So on December 14th, Janet Yellen, the Fed chairwoman, will, t will talk. And there, there is a lot of speculation that she will announce a Fed rate hike. Okay. okay? Um, that's, I believe it's going to be good news for mortgage bonds. I think the stock market, if you look at the history of when the Fed raises the Fed funds rates out of the abyss, which we're in right now, mm -hmm. um, the stock market tends to, to crash, tends to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens? What I just explained. Bond rate. Yep. Yeah. So money will flow into bonds which will cause a short-term improvement of mortgage interest rates. Mm -hmm. However, that will level off and it will come back after the knee-jerk reaction and we'll probably see rates go up as a result. Okay, okay. Yeah. So then the other thing that people ask me and talk about a lot, they, they say, you know, are we in a bubble again? They're asking questions like that. Yeah. Are we in a real estate bubble? Yeah. You're in the lending space. You, you jumped in right as everything was crumbling. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe speak to that a little bit and how lending differs now than it did yeah. back back in 2007, 2008. Okay, so bubble. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get this asked all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm the co-host of Seattle Real Estate Radio, and we talk about we get people calling in mm -hmm. and emails all the time on this. So, no, are we going to hit a bubble? Mm -hmm. No. So here's the thing: you can't. First off, you can't see a bubble, mm -hmm. right? Second, let's talk about 2006, 2007. So, um, my wife and I bought our first home. Mm -hmm together in 2004. She was a barista, okay? Mm -hmm. She made her money on tips. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a job at that point. I was searching for a job and I was a freelance professional strength and conditioning coach, yeah. right? So not a whole lot of documented income. <laughs> we bought a $390,000 house. Wow. 
with 5% down. Wow. Wow is wow. He's right. So it worked out for us mm -hmm. because we obviously built our careers and we're two people that were highly motivated and driven. Definitely. It did not work out that well for a lot of people in the mm -hmm. United States, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of foreclosures, people made bad decisions. So I say that because we did not have to actually qualify to purchase that home. We had good credit, we had the minimum down, and they didn't verify our income. Mm -hmm. Heck, they didn't even verify where the money for our down payment came from. I don't even know where it came from. I don't even know how I had 5% five, five <laughs> down on, on uh, $400,000. Yeah, right? So here's the deal. In today's marketplace, you know this. Mm -hmm. I don't say this to scare you, but getting a mortgage is tougher than ever. Mm -hmm. Okay, You actually have to qualify. We talked about the four factors. So since 2008, Everyone that owns a home, unless they've committed loan fraud, which is a bad thing, very bad thing, you've had to qualify for a home. Mm -hmm. So do I believe that there's a bubble coming? Do I believe there's a housing crash coming? No. Up here in Seattle, we've got a great economy. Mm -hmm. We've got a great housing market. Yeah. Uh, just drive up and down I-5 or 405 um, and, or 99 and just see the, 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 the cranes and the new construction. construction. everywhere. Yeah, it's blowing up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to continue as long as we've got, you know, Amazon and some of these tech companies continuing to come you know, to our area. The other thing is um, everyone's qualified. So everyone that's purchased a home has actually physically had to qualify, properly qualify and document qualifying for that home loan. So no, I am not, it's not a fear of mine. I'm not worried about it at yep. all. Do I think the housing market will slow down? Absolutely, yeah. and that would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Kind of a crazy pace right now, isn't it? Crazy pace, and I do think it'll slow down. I think it'll level off. It may actually even go down a little, which would actually be okay. Mm -hmm. But um, and I think what will cause that is when mortgage rates start to rise, that could slow things down a little. I mean, with rates where they're at right now, home home affordability mm -hmm. is ridiculously low right now. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So so you've talked about you know the interest rates and the fact that we're not in a bubble. Do you do you think right now is a good time to buy a house? I always think it's, it's a, a good time to buy question. a house. It's a loaded yeah. question. Yeah. It's, it's now yeah. a good time to buy a house. So, and I say that not from like a, a, a salesman standpoint. Mm -hmm. I always think it's a good time to buy a house um, considering you need a place to live mm -hmm. and considering what you compare it to and that's renting. So let's, let me ask, let me, let me talk about the other end of that question. Yeah, when it. it would not be a good time to buy a house. Tell us about that. Uh, it, when it would not be a good time to buy a house is if you don't know that you're going to be here for the next year or two. Mm -hmm. And outside of that, if you think that even if you were to exit the Seattle market, that you would not want to keep that home as an investment home. Mm -hmm. I think it's a phenomenal time to buy a house mm -hmm. with rates where they're at, mm -hmm. with I think home, home prices are only going to go up. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great time to buy a house. But things that I'd ask you to consider, what are your short term, what are your long term financial goals? and um, compare it to, what I do for my clients is I'll put together a rent versus own analysis okay. so you can actually see what it looks like compared to paying rent. Mm -hmm. People don't, people, oftentimes first time homebuyers don't realize that you get tax deductions, IRS tax deductions for home ownership. Yeah. You get to deduct your mortgage interest, your yeah. property taxes, your PMI, your private mortgage insurance if you put down less than 20% mm -hmm. and your closing costs. Okay. So there are some real benefits to home ownership, but that's something that, yeah, I think it's a great time to buy, but I think that's where you get together with someone like Zach, someone like myself. We put everything out on the table yeah. to really identify if it is a good time for you. Yeah, and so you talked about private mortgage insurance, PMI, a couple different times. Yep. Maybe help people that haven't bought a home or haven't had a loan before understand, like, what is PMI? Why do, yeah. they, why do they pay it? And then you mentioned avoiding it. Like, yeah. how do you avoid paying PMI? So private mortgage insurance is, uh, so I'm the lender, I'm loaning you the money, mm -hmm. okay? As a general rule of thumb, from a security standpoint, if you don't give me at least 20% down on the home, you're considered a risk. Mm -hmm. You're considered a higher risk. And that's kind of set by the agencies, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, mm -hmm. okay? Um, well, and I'd ask you the question too, if you got a buddy that, that asks you for a $300,000 loan to buy a house, you're, you're gonna want some form of a deposit, good faith deposit, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and where 20% kind of comes up is in the event that you default on that home, mm -hmm. you're going to have to pay a real estate agent approximately 6% to sell the house, mm -hmm. plus capital gains, plus excise tax, plus any others. You're going to have to estimate about 10% in charges mm -hmm. just to, to, to liquidate that house. Yeah. Then you've got to account for any late fees and penalties and depreciation if there is any. Yeah. So that's where the 20% factor comes in. 
So that's uh, one way to avoid private mortgage insurance. Yeah. So if you were to put down 10%, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the bank, we're going to require you to pay uh, an insurance policy to ensure us that in the event of default, we've got an insurance policy that will cover yeah. the foreclosure process, mm -hmm. if you will, without getting into detail. Ways of avoiding mm -hmm. private mortgage insurance. So typically, private mortgage insurance is reflected in a monthly premium. Mm -hmm. um, or you can pay a higher interest rate and have the lender pay private mortgage insurance. So there's okay. ways around. And what I'm doing with clients right now, especially with clients putting 10% down, mm -hmm. They're opting for a higher interest rate because they're seeing the tax benefits of a slightly higher interest rate. So instead of, for example, I'm not quoting interest rates, but for example, instead of a 3.625 30-year fixed, they're going with a 3.875, mm -hmm. paying a little bit of points and not having any private mortgage insurance whatsoever. Yeah. That's a good example. Yeah, that's a great example. Okay. So that's the way to get around it. Okay. So we talked a little bit about insuring risk and in a transaction, jumping back a little bit, back to the transaction part, you use this analogy that I that I like about like you're getting on an airplane, you're mm -hmm. flying. Can you can you explain that yeah. and kind of help people yeah. paint a picture for what the process looks like from a metaphorical standpoint? Okay. King of analogies right here. So <laughs> when you come in and you meet with me, we're gonna go over the wow mortgage planning meeting and part of this uh, part of this meeting. I'm going to give you an analogy. It's kind of a cheesy analogy and, it, and it's titled, Are You Ready to Fly? And what it is, is buying a home and getting a mortgage is much like flying on an airline, yeah. okay? Going on vacation, you're excited, and then, you know, there, I don't care how great the pilot is, you're going to encounter turbulence, Definitely. but there's no way to really identify when and where or what to expect when you get 35,000 feet above the earth, okay? So um, what I do, and I, I use the same approach with, with buying a home, Although we've done this a lot, we do this a lot, I don't know until we get you know, knee deep into this. That's why we do so much work up front to avoid a lot of this, yeah. but there are issues with properties, for example. Um, an agent could get sick or go out of town, which could cause a delay, a listing mm -hmm. agent. Escrow and title could fudge things up a little. Yeah. Um, a home inspection could screw things up a little. An appraiser, numerous things that an appraiser could do. Value could come in low, they could ask for numerous items. An appraiser could go rogue on us. Mm -hmm. I've had it where it, we can't get a hold of an appraiser. What's going on? Okay. So there are 89 ways that you can encounter turbulence during the mortgage process, mm. the home buying process. I've given you a form, a flyer. Yep. So you, the 89 ways are listed. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily go over those, but it's there for you to look at. Yeah. Um, but education and information mm -hmm. is power. It's it's important that you know that, and that we are. And this is the, the the tail end of that analogy is mm -hmm. you've got a great you've got a great pilot yep. you've got a great cabin crew mm -hmm. I'm gonna land this plane yeah and I'm gonna land it safely we mm -hmm. might end up in the Hudson in the <laughs> Hudson River yeah but you know what we're gonna have 258 yeah, survivors or however many on that airline Everybody. live everyone live yeah. right um, we're gonna get you to the finish line okay awesome. your that's destination a great, that's a great analogy yeah Thank you. <laughs> another good one huh I use it too so <laughs> just from the other the other other side of it. Yeah. So you've mentioned and spoke to a lot of different things. Maybe talk to somebody that's buying their first home. Mm -hmm. What what can they do to prepare? Maybe they're a year or two down the road. Yeah. Like what are things that they can be proactively doing to be ready yeah. to purchase that house in, in a year or two? Good, 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 good question. So the first thing that I would advise anybody to do: get your credit pulled. Mm -hmm. Get your credit pulled, whether it's uh, a mortgage company, um, whether it's I, I don't like the free versions. If you go to a mortgage company, it's just it's broken down so much better. Yeah. Um, what we have here is we actually have a credit analyzer too. So if you've missed the mark mm -hmm. on credit or you have very limited credit, I can run you through a credit analyzer and it'll give me tips nice. to advise you on how to improve your credit. So the first thing I would do is get get an idea of where you sit. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second thing is don't worry about loan programs or anything right now or pre-approval or pre-qualifications. Work on your budget. Figure out what okay. Fill out your, I have a form that I'm going to give you and it's your personal family budget. Yep. Have a plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the biggest thing where I failed, I'm 40 years old, where I failed my, my last 20 years of my life after I turned 20, 22, started working and making mm -hmm. money, is I just, I just focused on making money. <laughs> my number one job, and I just was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make this this year, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat it next year, and this is how <laughs> I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna beat it next year, and I've yep. done that. Every year I've always had my best year ever, but, hmm. I've had no plan around that. Okay. I've had no savings plan until about five years ago when um, I really got some great coaching 
um, in which you'll get this, the six steps to financial freedom. It's located in this packet where it really teaches you to fill out a family budget, mm -hmm. a personal budget. Um, it teaches you to plan. It teaches you the importance of maxing out your 401k, understanding your IRA options, mm -hmm. understanding life insurance. If you're a family man like me, four years ago, I didn't have life insurance. My wife and my kids were not protected if something bad mm -hmm. were to happen to me. So uh, understanding the importance of that. And there's, there's so many other things, saving, rainy day fund, Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big Dave Ramsey uh, supporter. I love yeah. Dave Ramsey's teachings. I've taught his financial peace courses at a couple different churches. And, um, and, and, and Dave Ramsey's, it's elementary and it's not for everyone, yeah. but it's a, good, it's a good baseline guide, right? Mm -hmm. I, I say, and hopefully Dave Ramsey doesn't hear this, I say that Dave Ramsey is the poor man's financial planner. His advice is free, okay? So read his books, his advice is free, but most of his advice is for poor people or beginners, which is not a bad thing because mm -hmm. I use a lot of his advice. I've used it personally and I hand it Me off. Me too. Yeah. So you you teach these classes, yet mm -hmm. you're a lender and you help people get a loan. Mm -hmm. See, and that's something Dave, Dave talks about, yeah. you know, in avoiding in, in yeah. most situations. So, yeah. you know, it sounds like you've got a little different perspective. Well, there. what people don't realize too is Dave Ramsey also owns a mortgage and real estate company. He's the number one real estate agent from a commission standpoint in the country. That's what people don't realize. Hmm. So, and we can talk about that off camera, <laughs> but understanding that Dave Ramsey has tied a lot of, and, and a lot of his teachings mm -hmm. are tied back into making a sound decision with your mortgage and your real estate transaction yeah. is big. And that's kind of, again, my approach and my business philosophy is tying this transaction, your mortgage into your short-term and your long-term financial goals. And if you do that, you'll look back in five or 10 years and be thankful that mm -hmm. Zach introduced you to me. Yeah, okay. So. I got a couple more. Yeah. I asked quite a few yeah, questions, but a couple great. more. So the first one here, we've ta just talked to somebody that's thinking about buying in a year or two. How about somebody that's like ready to buy a house, yep. they've got good credit, they've got money down, yep. they've, they've got good income, yep. all those things, they know where they want to be. They're on the fence. They're, they're talking about the election, maybe yep. like, oh, we don't know what's yep. going to go on. And maybe they're thinking 2000, 2017 is going to be the year. Yep. Like, what do you say to those people that are not quite sure if they want to buy or they want to keep renting? Yeah. So again you're taking somebody that doesn't know the real estate market and doesn't know the mortgage market probably spends a fair amount of time on social media so they're getting bombarded with the election stuff Definitely. and hillary this and donald that mm -hmm. here's the thing talk to zach talk to a real estate professional Na each neighborhood is different mm -hmm. you know whether you're looking up north whether you're looking in different pockets of the seattle market that you know a lot about mm -hmm. um let zach do some research on those markets um, if, if one particular market is continuing to appreciate at 14, 16, 17%, buy now. It, now is a better time. And the reason why I'd say that is if it's, if it's moving up like that and rates are scheduled to increase, you're getting a better cost of your money and you're buying that home at a lower value now than by waiting to January or February of next year. So um, every, every area is different. Mm -hmm. So that's my best advice there. Don't try to time the market. If your lease is up, and you're in a position to purchase, or if you have a home and you're thinking about, you know, this house isn't the house that we're, we see ourselves yeah. in in the next six, to, six months to a year, talk to Zach, see what you can get for that house, meet with me, let's put together a budget, mm -hmm. and I think what you're going to see, if I were to just give you my take on it, mm -hmm. six months from now, rates are gonna be up another half a point. Yep. If you were to look at the difference between for example, a 3.75 30-year fix and a four and a quarter 30-year fix, it's a big difference. Add 10 to 12% appreciation on that home over a six month period, that's, you're paying a lot more for it's a home. It's real money. Yeah, it's real money. Plus, you can cash in on selling your house now if you had a house to sell for, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a fair swap. Yeah, I mean, and you can always find a good deal in any market. There's yeah. always a value purchase in any market. Yeah. You just have to be looking for the it. The value purchase is, and I tell all my clients, when you send them in to me, don't go to Zach looking for a deal. It's not 2010 anymore. You're not going to get a pre-foreclosure or a short sale. There aren't necessary. very many of those. There's not a lot. <laughs> yeah, and so, but go to, lean on Zach and I to help you get a, bet, a great deal over time. Mm -hmm. The lowest cost of your money over time mm -hmm. is what you should be focusing on yeah. versus a quote unquote low price on an offer, low balling a seller. Cool, cool. So we can end, we'll wrap up on this one. Crystal ball time, Yeah. you know, five, 10 years down the road. How, how is the lending, how is the lending field, gonna, how's it gonna be different? Yeah. What's the real estate space gonna look like? You've, you've been in this space for yeah. a while. What's it gonna look like to get a home loan? How, are, yeah. how might rates, 
change. So hopefully in five years, our economy is back on track. Hopefully in five years, rates are up over 6%, which they should be, 6 7%, um, which is not a bad thing. And hopefully, something that I've seen over the last couple of years, which makes me sick, the media and the industries are really trying to commoditize a real estate transaction and a mortgage transaction. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't think you will, and I, I wanna say this because I, I, I care so much about the advice standpoint and what I see that goes into the mortgage, um, it, to funding a mortgage. I don't think it's ever gonna get as easy for you to just as a home buyer to click and get a mortgage. Click and get a mortgage online. I think you can do it, you will be able to do it, um, but it, again, Take the approach that this is the largest financial decision of your life. You do this a couple times, maybe three or four times in your whole entire lifetime. Lean on a pro. Yeah. You know, I don't fix my gutters. I don't fix my roof. I call a roofer. I don't even paint my house. Dude, I don't even clean my house. I'm cleaners. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't like screwing things up. Yeah. So um, from that standpoint, when it comes to your mortgage, one of the biggest financial decisions of your life, lean on pros. Mm -hmm. um, from a real estate standpoint, Gosh, you know, I don't know. I think um, the market here in Seattle, everything that I read and I study the market, we're seeing so many people move up from the Bay Area. And if you look at what happened down there with their housing markets, mm -hmm. I mean, I get people moving up, selling their $1.8 million shack mm -hmm. in the Bay Area, shack yeah. for 1.8 mil. Small. Buying 1.2 million, 1.3 up here and, and like, going, oh my God. This is a palace. I mean, I can see, the, yeah. And I got a view of the water, Lake W. You know, so. You know, it's uh, I, I that's what I see. I okay. see the housing market continuing to grow. We live in a very, I mean, gosh, the Pacific Northwest it's one of is the so beautiful. Most beautiful places to be. Yeah, born and raised here, and I'll never leave. Yeah, yeah. same. Yeah. So I lied. I got one more. Well, okay. it's really a lie. I've got one more question for okay. you. So we we've talked about a lot of things. We talked about rates. We've talked about yeah. the process. We've talked about kind of what the future looks yeah. like. Somebody that's thinking, I, I just want the best rate. That's kind of what they're focused on. Yeah. What do you tell that, like, what do you say to that person that just wants to focus on rate? What what other things should they be considering that maybe they're not considering yeah. that might not impact them right now, yeah. but it's going to have an impact yeah. on them down the road? So, listen, I, um, I want, everybody wants a deal. I want a deal. But here's the thing. I, the, the, the car that I bought, the, the, the vehicle that I own, I bought that from the sales professional and the dealership, not because it was $5,000 less than across town in Bellevue. Mm -hmm. I bought it because I can take that, my truck into the dealership anytime and they'll detail it for free. Mm -hmm. I bought it because of the service level. The guy drove over the other side of the mountains and picked up my truck and brought it to me. You know, and was that's, that worth service? Yeah, free oil changes and service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and they set up all the electronics in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the thing is, um, Everybody wants a great deal. When it comes to a mortgage, um, I, I, I ask this to my clients. I ask this question to my clients. The best rate may end up costing you the most in the long run. Don't focus on rate. There's so much that goes into just an interest rate. So for example, um, and I see this all the time, if we are, and I'm just gonna throw this out as an analogy, I'm not quoting interest rates, and I have to say that as a legal disclaimer. Yep. Um, if our interest rate on a 30-year fixed is 3.625, and you can find a better interest rate online at 3.375, so what, about a quarter of a percent lower? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a quarter percent lower. Mm -hmm. But what you will have to go through to get that to get that rate, the points you may have to pay, um, the, the extension fees on your rate lock that you'll have to pay, um, just the experience. I mean, and it's not even the extensions. If you have to extend the real estate contract, we're in a competitive market up here. Yeah. Sellers are now saying, if you want to extend, it's a hundred dollar a day per diem. Yeah, see it all the time. So extend for eleven days. There's eleven hundred bucks. If you would have given me eleven hundred bucks, I could have bought down your rate to three point three seven five and closed you in twenty eight days. Yep. So it's just, and then the advice that you're going to get from me. Listen, Tuesday updates, Friday updates, us calling you all the time, us catering to you, mm -hmm. inviting you to events that I host with financial planners and real estate attorneys and mm -hmm. estate planners. And I mean, there's so many things that I do over, I will add more value mm -hmm. to your mortgage than just a quarter percent different in rate mm -hmm. from an online lender that you'll never meet, that you don't even know if they even exist, mm -hmm. right? So I, I just, I, I tell my clients, we're super competitive. That's why I'm here at New American Funding. 
from a, you know, you compare us to the local banks and the credit unions and other local mortgage companies, we're right there. Yeah. We're as competitive as heck. Get the focus off of that and the focus on the total savings, the total cost of your mortgage. Yeah, well, and the service level and the value so is just big. not even con not even comparable yeah. between you guys and yeah. them. So. so big. Yeah. So you talked about value. Thank you. This was really valuable. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I get a lot of value out yeah, of this man. time just... Just picking yeah. your brain and, yeah. and and then being able to share that with with you you all as well. Yeah. So thanks again, Dan. Appreciate you having me. Any last words? Yeah, listen to Zach. He's a great agent. Um, there's some things in, in real estate professionals that you just can't find out there all over the place. One is passion. Hmm. Uh, two is knowledge. The, the thing I love about you is you're younger. You're 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 inspired and you're growing. The guy's a, he's a student of the game, just like me. I'm 40. I'm not young like you. I yeah. wish I was. I wish I got and in I, the game. I'm not 40. So. Yeah. <laughs> But here's the thing, um, you, I'm always learning, yep. and you want to be surrounded as a home buyer or a seller. You want to make sure you're surrounded by people that are constantly studying, and they have that servant leadership type approach. Hmm. You're, you serve your clients really well. It's the same approach I take with my agents yeah. and with my clients. So that's all I have in closing. Thanks, Dan. Lean on Zach. Dude, rock star. All right. Thank you.